Okay, so uh, hello everyone and welcome to our last session of this evening, uh, Endangered. Uh, we are joined here by Gordon Mead, a Scottish poet who will be reading a number of poems from his most recent collection, In Transit. Uh, the poems are from the section titled Endangered, which appears, uh, which uh, reflects, sorry, on animals in danger of extinction. Uh, accompanying the reading uh, will be slides taken from the International Union for Conservation of Nature's uh, the IUCN Red List. Uh, so I will just share the screen and can you see the slides now? Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you, Gordon. You can start. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Amon. Thanks for doing the slides for me as well. Uh, and thanks for inviting me again this year uh, to read some poems. As Amnon uh, said in his introductions, these are taken from my most recent book in transit. And there's one section of about 16 poems, quite short poems, about animals that have found themselves on the international red list. And I'm going to read about nine of them. So if we could have the first slide, that'd be great. So the first poem is it's called Vaquita Porpoise number 22. Uh, as I was writing the poem about maybe 18 months ago, it was uh, said that there were about 22 of these creatures still alive in the wild. By the time this poem has been written, perhaps there will be under 20 of us left in the wild. And once it has been taken for publication in an environmentally aligned magazine, maybe only 10. If it should ever make it into an anthology of endangered creatures, we could be in single figures. And when it finds itself in a collection, we might well be deemed extinct. Well, luck, luckily for the, the porpoises, this, this hasn't happened, but they, they reckon probably there's only about 10 of them left. So they are still decreasing. And uh, the, next, the next poem is about the Tuanapec jackrabbit, who uh, lives in Southern Mexico. And its main dangers are it's being hunted for both uh, food and sport. And also habitat loss is a, is a difficulty for it as well. And at the moment, there's no formal protection for this creature. There's a reference in the poem to a book, maybe some of you have come across, uh, The Four Agreements, which is a Toltec wisdom book by Don Miguel Ruiz. And in that book, there are four different precepts that are meant to help human beings uh, spiritually, if you like. And they are uh, being impeccable with your word, not taking things personally, not making any assumptions and always doing your best. And uh, in this poem, we see how these uh, precepts may or may not help this jackrabbit. The four agreements didn't work out so well for me. Not taking things personally wasn't that much fun when I found myself staring down the barrel of a gun. Not making any assumptions was a bit of a pain when I could clearly see the marksman taking aim. Doing my best didn't cut much ice when what it meant was just me having to run faster than the rest. And being impeccable with my word was all well and good, but it never stopped anyone from wanting to shoot. And the next poem is about Hawksbill turtle. Again, although these, are, these creatures are found worldwide, uh, they're recently, numbers have declined by about 80%, uh, mostly for the tortoise shell trade uh, and pollution in the seas, and also their nesting sites, uh, some of them are being lost to tourism. Oxbill turtle. Doesn't everybody love a nice piece of polished tortoise shell? 
made up into the shape of, say, a comb, a mirror, or a brooch. Bycatch is what they call it. Should we die entangled in gill nets or on the end of a hook? Look how beautifully the light catches my back as I surface from the depths. Wouldn't just a little part of me look stunning as either an ashtray or the lid of a box? And the next poem is from the point of view of the Floriana Mockingbird. Uh, they they live only their only habitat is two islets off the coast of Floriana Island in the Galapagos, and they're in danger of disappearance because one of their main food sources and nesting places, the prickly pear cactus, is in decline. And there's a there's a reference to Charles Darwin. Uh, it was Floriana Mockingbird was one of the creatures that he used uh, for his theory of natural selection. Apparently, in the good old days, I was Charles Darwin's muse. The inspiration behind his theory of natural selection. These days, however, I'm singing a different sort of tune. A lamentation for the decimation of the prickly pear cactus, on which I like to roost. Without it, I might soon be gone. Does this, I wonder, make Darwin's idea of the survival of the fittest right or wrong? And I follow this one with Snow Leopard. Again, lots of reasons for its decline or reduction in its prey base through poaching, degradation of its habitat, and the occasional illegal hunting for its skin. Snow Leopard. You would think I would be safer than most considering where I have chosen to live. More than halfway up the side of a mountain in a region steeped in Tibetan Buddhism, but apparently not. Your influence, it seems, has extended everywhere. Perhaps it is best for me to remain little more than a figment of your imagination. Then, although you would never be able to see me, you could still allow yourself to believe I might exist. Uh, the next one's Polar Bear. Uh, anyone that was at last year's uh, conference I see similarities between these poems and the other ones I, I wrote about captive animals, in that the idea is to try and give these animals a voice themselves to say something about their, their own predicament. And I think especially with animals in, that are endangered, we tend to see them as, as symbols of their, their particular species, whereas, as has been mentioned in other uh, presentations, they are individuals. These are all individual animals. Polar bear. So far north that there is nowhere else left for me to go. I'm aware that my world is melting. Each year, there is less of what I call home to call my own. What was once solid ice and easy for me to walk upon has now become little more than open water, which, for mere survival, 
I must just dive in. And what will be the, the second last poem is a Sumatran orangutan. And here again, habitat lost due to ex excessive logging, uh, the harvesting of palm oil. And once again, their numbers have declined in the last 75 years by over 80%. Sumatran orangutan. What happens to the original wild man of the woods? when the woods themselves are in the process of being chopped down for flat, flat pack furniture. I will end up in a place like this, a wildlife sanctuary, where I will be seen by some as a sort of sage, the kind that never speaks, one whose messages you must learn to discern just by gazing into my eyes. And I'll close with a poem, a Siamese crocodile. These uh, crocodiles are actually uh, named extinct in the wild in 1992, but there are, there are thousands of them uh, being bred in captivity for uh, meat and for their skin, for fashion, etc. So they have a life, but not the one that they uh, would have wished for. Siamese crocodile. You thought my tears were just for show. How on earth were you supposed to know that the opposite was true? You believed almost all the stories your parents told you, raised on fairy tales and lies. You had no way of knowing that when I cried, I wasn't kidding. The tears I wept were shed to show you that if you proved unwilling to listen to my crying, you would just end up as witness to my dying. Okay, thank you. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Gordon. That was uh, really beautiful and moving. And uh, uh, I think also a really good um, uh, ending for uh, for the conference, um, I, if it's okay with you, I, I will, I will, I will share in the chat uh, the information about how to get your your book and how to contact you. Yeah, that's um, okay. So I'll just put it now. Um, if, if I might say, and if, if anyone will have also other responses, um, that I think it's also something that poetry, at least for me, is something that I was requires some, some thought and processing, but maybe just saying that, uh, first of all, this was very beautiful and also sad and, and, and um, Really, I think maybe draws the, the hearts of minds also to to uh, to animals, both as as individuals and as species, and 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 also ties up many of the concepts that we've had in in the conference, such as uh, um, the the interdependencies, which is something that we also saw very strongly with COVID and um, with the crisis, uh, different crises that we are facing. Uh, which impact uh, humans and animals and and nature as a whole, um, and 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 also these interdependencies that regard our own personal and collective needs and and, and dreams and and even their existence. Um, 
So really, thank you very much for 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 walking us through through this journey while helping us seeing reality as it is, as uncomfortable as it is, but being able to to observe it also through the eyes of of the animals that we share this planet with. Um, thank you well, for thank that. You. Thank you. Very much. Good. Thank you. Um, so. Um, we, with with this said, uh, I think as it's also getting quite late, um, perhaps we'll uh, conclude the uh, the second day of our conference and 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 actually the conference um, itself. So uh, we really wish to thank all, all the speakers and and the audience for taking part in this uh, fascinating and significant uh, conference. Um, this has been a truly meaningful experience for us, the community for human animal studies in Israel. Um, it's always inspiring to meet fellow uh, scholars, uh, artists, activists, uh, human and some non-human animals which took part in this uh, stimulating discourse in the past uh, two days, uh, expanding thought and action on, on what it means uh, living on this planet uh, in different landscapes, uh, in critical times, uh, between the personal and the political. Um, so we are welcoming everyone who wishes to further collaborate and develop this discipline to join us uh, throughout the year in different platforms in, in Hasi. And we also hope to see you all again uh, in the conference next year. Um, so thank you very much and, and be safe.